Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Laws That Matter. I'm Carissa Kranz, and we have a great rundown today. First up, we have Stephanie Bosco, superfood goddess, holistic health coach. Today's show is about how can you achieve optimal physical and mental health with or through diet. So without any delays, Stephanie, thank you for joining me today. It's a pleasure to have you here. Tell us, what does it mean to be a superfood goddess? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, you know, I, I have such a, a positive view on life. And this is something that I've had to, to come through, you know, just through the journey that I've been through. And, uh, you know, I feel that being a goddess is a way of speaking positive about oneself and about others. I mean, I love calling other people, other women goddess, I, you know, just bringing up that that good energy. And, uh, and so I daily incorporate tons of superfoods into my diet because I know they're nutrient dense. They're going to make me feel good uh, mentally, but also physically and fuel me. Um, so really superfood goddess is just taking care of myself, being able to share that with others and I'm um, in and nutritionally helping people. And how'd you come up with that name? Uh, good question. Uh, there were a lot of other names that were taken <laughs> as I was kind of, you know, browsing social media. Um, but I really just, like I said, I was really just trying to conjure that, that positivity and and how could I bring up the the energy of myself and others. And um, and I just, I thought, you know what? I eat superfoods every day. I take care of myself. I take care of my body as as optimally as possible, as if it's a temple. And, and so I thought, oh, okay, goddess. Yeah, super, goddess is superfoods, of course. <laughs> And how long have you been on this path of uh, superfoods and health food and and diet and veganism? How long have you been on this path? This is about thirteen years now. I so long time ago. Best decision I've ever made. And how did you come to that decision? So it actually did come through mental health. Uh, my my brother had been checked into the psych ward for the first time twelve years ago or thirteen years ago, and just like any other circumstance that's emergency status, you you search online, you start talking to professionals. And my mom and I came up with the vegan diet. We kept hearing how positive, how compassionate, how energetically it, it was different than eating you know, dead meat. And so we thought, you know what, let's do a three month vegan challenge. Well, that was 13 years ago and, and I never went back. I mean, it's, it's, it was that powerful for myself during that three months of transformation. I felt good. My mental health was doing better. My digestion was better. So I just, I stuck with it. And of course it started as health and now it's gone for the animals and for the environment and spirituality as well. So you stuck with it, but did your mom? No, my mom and brother, they, they adopted some of the, the, uh, the, the food and, and the lifestyle. And, uh, but you know, you, you can't, you can't force people to do things. So I really, I look at myself as an inspiration and they are, he, her and him were constantly changing things just by what they saw me doing. So I would mm -hmm. say they're, they're about 85% plant-based, which I think is still a pretty huge win. Yes, I would love for them to be vegan, but you know, 80% it's getting there. Yeah, no, and you have to live your life not in judgment of others. Like I was born and raised vegan. My mom raised me vegan, but my dad was not a vegan my whole life, but now when we go out to eat, he, he lets me order for him and he eats a strictly vegan diet when he's around me. I don't really talk to him about what he does when he's not around me because I don't think I want to know, but I do know that he's also like 80 to 90% there even when he's not around me because his consciousness is completely elevated on the topic because this is my life and the way I'm living it. So you know, yeah, it's good that you're on that path. So 13 years, tell me about what you've been doing with your career in those 13 years and veganism. Yeah, sure. Thanks. <laughs> uh, you know, I just, I started cooking for myself and it became therapeutic. And, and I actually did, I, for the first two years of, of being vegan, I was on SSSRIs. I was on medication for mental health and just through the diet alone and, and cooking a lot for myself and learning just, I mean, it was really just basic life skills that I started incorporating that, that helped me be more confident, that helped me feel like I was making a choice for myself and to control of my life and my lifestyle, only inviting in good, 
uh, only inviting compassion. And at some point I got off medication. Um, I, you know, at that point, I don't, I don't know that I, I made the connection yet with what exactly was going on or how, how powerful plants were. I still was kind of just on my own journey and I started cooking a lot. I was cooking for other people. I lived in this, in this place where there were a bunch of girls around me. So I would just, I would always cook for these women and, um, and they loved my food. And so it was kind of a boost for me. And so I started, I really just started diving into it. I started sharing with as many people as possible. And they said, you know, you need to do something with this. People kept encouraging me and I kept thinking, nah, I don't know, I'll, I'll think about it later. And, and, and just the more I kept doing it, people kept reaching out and asking for questions. And, uh, you know, Steph, I have a sore throat. What should I eat during this time? Uh, my stomach kind of hurts. Or I'm having sinus issues. I remember you saying you used to have those, which I did. I had sinus issues all the time until I got rid of the dairy. Uh, so I, I started becoming that person for health and wellness that people came to. And I decided I want to make this my living, this my life work. I want to become a health coach. And, and have you been able to make it your full-time job? Um, so I'm almost there. At this point, pretty much, yes, because uh, since COVID, it kind of, you know, I know 2020 has been very hard for many of us, and it has changed so many things for a lot of us. But at the same time, I, I really do have to see the silver lining. I, I try to always look for the positive. And for me, the positive was it brought me 100% online. It brought me mm -hmm. new find those clients and I even created a group coaching so that I could help more clients at once at a discounted price uh, so it's um I have been able to oh, it's it's basically almost I, I still have little side jobs here and there before I was modeling a little bit and uh, mm -hmm. working with other health food brands and helping them promote their product because I, I love doing that I think that people need to know who to be buying from. I know that not every product is created equal. Uh, there's not always the best ingredients in every product. Mm -hmm. uh, just understanding, you know, who, who to buy from um, is something that really uh, fuels me because I know in the beginning, I didn't know what I was doing and, and I needed someone to hold my hand. And so that's really what, what I want to do with people. Take, uh, I'll take your hand. I don't care where you're at. Let's walk together and, you know, walk mm -hmm. into good energy, walk into being... Mm -hmm fueled correctly and feeling good. And where can people um, find you if they want to get coaching from you? Do you have a membership program or is it online or how are you signing? How are you getting people to come to you? Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm well, so I'm, my biggest presence is on Instagram uh, and I do get clients from there. Uh, that's often how I present my programs. I do one on one programs and then I do have a three month coaching program, which we are almost halfway through our three months. So, um, so every couple months I, I re-enroll people in that. So if you just, you know, contact me on Instagram or if you go on my website, the superfoodgoddess.com, you can find me there. And I love answering questions. So if anytime anyone just even has questions about working together or food in general, I'm always here to help. Okay. And this, your vegan journey started with you over I guess um, a mental a mental health it sounds like, and then it's transitioned into a compassionate uh, way of life. So, what would you say is the driving reason for your um, staying the course? Honestly, the animals, uh, <laughs> the animals, and my mental health. To be, I, I, I would say both. Uh, mm -hmm. I think because I came into it for health and mental health, that was that was the driving force. And then when I started finding out what was going on behind the scenes and, and how the animals were treated and, you know, and what free range really meant. And um, it really, that's what kept me sticking with it. Cause you know, sure, like I, I thought the world was over when, when I couldn't have dairy anymore. I loved cheese. I loved yogurt. And I thought, Oh my gosh, what am I going to do now? And, and there's so many great alternatives as well as just, you know, learning things you can make at home that are still creamy and still satisfying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean like that's it. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I know, I think it's common that a lot of people who are vegetarian for the animals kind of, they block out the dairy derivative here of how bad and cruel dairy can be um, to the animals. So if you were to give out any free advice about how you can, as a coach, I mean, you're out there, you're a coach, what would your advice be to those watching? You know, I, I think it's a powerful thing when you are able to, to take control of your life and your journey and your energy. 
And, and I think that that really starts with our plate. Uh, what we put on our plate, the colorful, diverse amount of food, uh, clean food, whole food, uh, whole food plant-based is honestly the way to go. But if you can just incorporate more of that in your diet, that's going to help you energetically. Uh, you know, you're going to have more energy. You're going to feel better. And and honestly, I, you know, you you know that you're living a, a healthy, compassionate lifestyle all around. And that starts with your plate. So just always feeding yourself with whole foods, drinking lots of water, and remembering to be kind to yourself and and loving yourself. Would you say that you felt a spiritual elevation when you transitioned to veganism? Absolutely. My my entire life changed. I, I Because I had to start thinking differently about what was on my food. I mean, I'm sorry, on my plate. And so I had to start thinking about the thoughts that I was incorporating into my life. What, how was I speaking to myself? What kind of events was I going to? What kind of people was I allowing into my life? I had no idea that it was going to actually affect me on such a spiritual level. I... I have different friends now. I have friends that, that bring so much to my life. I go to events where I'm constantly learning. And I think that life is about constant learning and growth. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, I, I went to become a, a yoga teacher seven years ago. I traveled Bali for, for five mm -hmm. weeks. It, it was amazing. And it, it's just mm -hmm. opened so many doors that I don't know that I, I would have thought were possible um, or even it's allowed. It's version of Eat, Pray, Love. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> Traveling Bali, doing yoga, <laughs> eating veganism. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, it just it made me feel good. Do you have any projects coming up that uh, you can discuss? Yeah. Um, so I've been, and this is still in the works, uh, but hopefully in in January or February, I will have a virtual retreat. I know that right now we don't really know about traveling certain places and I'm um, and we're still kind of, you know, distancing. Um, I, this year was going to be my year for my first Bali retreat. I had it all set up and it didn't happen. So I thought, you know, maybe in a couple months I'll do a virtual retreat where it's kind of like a summit, a, a time where we can come together. We can remind ourselves to take care of ourselves, uh, to connect with not only uh, our inner self, but but others. Uh, I know right now connection is huge. Um, it's even bigger now because we're a lot of us are at home. Um, so so yeah. So I'm going to be launching a retreat soon online until I can do it in person. So I want to put up a question from Paige. What would you recommend for someone who's feeling blue? Sure. Uh, so Thanks, Paige. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Paige. I love eating goji berries, really any kind of berries. Berries are super high in antioxidants. And, you know, when someone's feeling down, blue, overwhelmed, uh, depressed, or stressed, antioxidants can really help fuel and replenish your body, as well as help fight your body, uh, fight oxidative stress, which in turn can at some point turn into cancer. So eating a handful of blue blueberries eating a handful of goji berries. I mean, you can make it pretty, you can make a, a smoothie pretty and, and throw it on your smoothie, but I also just love having a handful of it. Um, and also cacao. Cacao also is a nice mood uplifter. So if you can make yourself, a, you know, get some cacao powder, mix it in with some non-dairy milk or some water, warm it up, and then sweetener of your choice. I usually use a, an herbal sweetener like stevia or monk fruit. Um, but yeah, chocolate and berries. <laughs> and what do you typically eat in a day? What's your typical breakfast, lunch, dinner? Sure. I love oatmeal, rolled oats. Uh, so I'll make that with either water or non-dairy milk and then throw some berries and slice bananas on there. Uh, for lunch, I love having a huge salad. And I know sometimes people think, oh man, salads are boring. You can't get full off of them. I mean, my salads are so packed with beans and shredded carrots and shredded beets and just so many different things. Um, so that's usually for lunch. And then for dinner time, I'm Italian. I, I'm, I love Italian foods. So I'll make a really yummy, I actually kind of call it an Italian stir fry because I mm -hmm. sometimes if I feel like adding some pasta, I will. But otherwise, I just stir fry a bunch of vegetables, broccoli, carrots, tomatoes, bell peppers, zucchini. 
And then I'll pour a little bit of tomato sauce in it, some fresh herbs, and I'll either eat it alone or on some zucchini noodles or gluten-free pasta. I think this sounds like a good time to talk to our vegan chef that we have today too. You know, the plant-based G? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's happening? Hi, Marlon Risen. Thanks hello, hello, me. hello, hello, I, ladies. I understand you two know each other. Yes, we do. Hello, Steph. Great to see you again. You hello, too. Carissa. Good to be on with you. You too. Thank you. I want to hear all about your vegan cooking and what the plant-based G is. Yes, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So again, Marlon Rison, uh, I'm better known as the plant-based G on Instagram, Facebook, etc. Um, anyways, um, I guess my forte, which has kind of evolved during my uh, vegan journey, is the cooking. Um, if you've been on my, uh, my Instagram or on my Facebook page, You've seen some of the incredible dishes that I'll whip up and put together. Uh, so for me, you know, it's, um, you know, the vegan journey actually started about three years ago. And I've kind of evolved from that novice who was just getting his hands dirty to now um, I'm whipping up things in the kitchen, uh, you know, sometimes two or three times a day. So it's uh, it's been fun. I love it. What are I love you it. whipping up in the kitchen two to three times a day? Yeah, well, well, well it's funny. Um you know, so I'm big on on trying new things, uh, new vegetables and, and whatnot. So so for me, you'll find me doing a lot of things with cauliflower. Like I make a fried uh, cauliflower non chicken sandwich that's uh, to die for. Then also I do a lot with mushrooms. Mushrooms are definitely my favorite. And, and for me, the most versatile, you know, vegetable that you have. Uh, so anyways, well, actually not a vegetable, fun guy. So anyways, mushrooms are are incredible in terms of the things you do with them. I make everything from shredded chicken tacos to um, steak-like, you know, products to the other day I made some um, quote unquote vegan popcorn shrimp with uh, with these baby king oyster mushrooms. So I do literally, I get crazy in the kitchen when it comes to food, but, but it's a lot of fun for me. And um, that's one thing that's made my journey uh, that much more enjoyable. Okay, and you're also an author, right? Yes, 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 sure. I actually came out with my uh, first vegan cookbook um, this year called The Quarantine 15. So, um, obviously, I'm sorry, go ahead. You and the Superfood Goddess have elevated their vegan careers because of COVID. Yes, absolutely. It's, it's crazy because, you know, for me, whenever COVID first hit, um, started working from home and so found myself with, you know, more time to, to kind of put into some of the vegan things that I was doing. And people have been asking me for for an extended period of time to put out a cookbook. So finally, I said, you know what? I've got more time at home to really focus on uh, food and kind of putting recipes together. And so I said, you know, I'm going to come out with my favorite 15 recipes. We're quarantined. So I was like, it's easy. Call it the quarantine 15. And, 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 and there you go. So I came up with, like I said, 15 of my favorite, very comfort food feeling um, recipes. And, uh, and there you have it. And where can we get this book? Um, you can actually find the cookbook at Quarantine 15. So that's Quarantine15.life. Quarantine15.life. Got the cookbook on there. I actually have some other uh, Quarantine 15 merchandise that you can grab too. But for anyone that's into not just good vegan food, but good comfort food, I got it. I got you. I got you covered. It's good. <laughs> And what made you go vegan? What was your reason three years ago for transitioning to this vegan diet? Um, I think it was similar to a lot of people's journey. Uh, one afternoon, I uh, was hanging out with a friend of mine, uh, Netflix and chilling. And so was going through, you know, some of the things that I guess were popping up in my uh, in my algorithm. And so, you know, what the health popped up. And I was like, OK, this looks interesting. And um, I've always been into health and trying to better myself. In terms of um, you know how I how I take care of uh, of, my, of my own health care, and so sure enough, started watching it, and I'd say probably halfway through it, I remember stopping it, and I said, you know what, our lives literally just changed, and so for me, I knew from um, from there on, I would never go back to consuming any animal products, and so and so for me, just to give you a, a quick little bit of background, at the time, it was all about. The health side of it. So I was looking at the foods that we were eating, how we were lied to as far as these foods, quote unquote, being good for us. And so I took offense to it, you know. And so for me, part of the, the issue I had wasn't just the health side, but I felt like they lied to us and they've been lying to us. And so for me, like I said, I took offense to it. 
And so whenever I get factual information, I don't go back. And so once the information was presented to me, um, it was easy for me to make that decision. And so, like I said, it was about the health side, the information that I was given. And then similar to, um, to Steph, um, it evolved into the compassion. And I would have never thought, and I can tell you, I'm from Texas, you know, grew up eating steaks, playing football, you know, machismo was heavy. So, you know, I was more about the health side, was never thinking about the compassion as far as animals went. And sure enough, as I started traveling out to the Los Angeles area, linked up with Paige and, and just real kind hearted people like Steph and, and so many others who, um, you know, I started seeing and feeling the compassion side of it all. And so I actually went out to Farmer John's and was able to experience um, what it's like being out there and, and, and whatnot. And so for me, um, it opened up my eyes to so much. And so I'd say in terms of one of the things that I'm most proud of is definitely the higher level of compassion um, that I've been able to get, you know, from making this transition. And how has this transition changed your life? I see some comments here. I see Paige is still tuning in. She, she said, didn't you lose half your body weight on a plant-based diet change? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's another, yeah, sidebar. Yeah, yeah, quick. Just sort of, yeah. I'll forget about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sidebar, I forgot to mention that. But, um, but I actually lost about 150 pounds too. Whenever I made the transition, sidebar, and, right? Yeah, yeah, sidebar. I lost about hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Side, quick sidebar. But um, and, and again, I was trying to be healthier, but by no means was I knew I was going to lose some weight. But I wasn't in it to you know lose like oh, I'm going to lose all this weight and I'm going to do. I was like you know I'm going to lose some weight, but I'll be healthier. And, and more importantly, I was like you know I just want to live the best life that I possibly can in the healthiest state that I can too. So slowly. I was losing weight and I lost, you know, 10, 20, 30 pounds. I expected that. Then it kept going and I expected that. But then it kept going and kept going and kept going. I remember going to the doctor and I was like, hey, doc. I was like, you know, he was like, yo, you look incredible. Your numbers are great. I said, but I'm losing a lot, man. I don't know if this is the way that I'm supposed to be. And a lot of people in my family are bigger individuals. So I always thought and was raised to believe that I was supposed to be a big person. And so anyways, I told the doc, I said, you know, I'm, I'm supposed to be a big guy. And he said, well, wait a minute. He said, what might be taking place is you're actually forming into the individual you really should be. And so once I changed my outlook and I said, you know what, I'm just let things happen naturally. And then where I end up is where I end up. And so sure enough, I ended up about 150 pounds late, 150 pounds, probably four wardrobe changes, um, mm -hmm. so many triple, quadruple takes with people who know me and they're like, I know you, but who are you? You know, through through all of those things, here I am today. And so, like I said, that along with everything else has made it um, just an incredible journey. And, and, and the bigger thing is I don't have the years in the game like you and Steph. So, you know, I'm looking forward to those years and years and years of of all the beautiful experiences and the people who I encounter, um, the, the people who I can help out and hopefully um, elevate their lifestyles. So, so for me, being a rookie, you know, I still consider myself to be a rookie. Um, it's been it's been a beautiful journey thus far. Mm -hmm. Did anything else change that would cause you to lose weight besides your diet? Did you up the exercise? Any other changes? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I've always been heavy into exercising and, and I used to be a power lifter. So I was always heavy into weightlifting. And, and, and so I was real active. But but the interesting part was, as I you know felt better, I was still active, but I started doing things that I wasn't doing in my 20s. I was like, yo, I feel great. I can work out twice a day. And I've mixed in intermittent fasting and, and so many other things. Because again, you know, I used to buy into, you know, a lot of the nonsense that they sold us, you know, as far as you've got to eat your three squares a day, you've got to do this. And and then once I truly learned what my body needed, once I truly tuned in to what my body needed, you know, I figured out, you know, I can do anything. And so I truly put myself to the test. And, and, and to answer your question right quick, too, I ran my first marathon also um, about a year or so into my journey, which I hated running. Hated running, never like, especially long distances, hated running. Like, I felt so good um, mentally and even from a spiritual standpoint. Um, I wanted to challenge myself even more so and really elevate, um, you know, kind of who it was and the things that I could accomplish. So ran my, my first marathon 
Um, it was an incredible experience. So again, um, you know, the transition to veganism has done tons for me. And how are you using your message to have others gravitate towards your message? Um, you know, really what I, what I try to do, and it's funny because I tell people, you know, I try to speak to people via food. And so, so I utilize food to open up the doors to the conversation. And so, you know, I try to put the most beautiful things in front of people to where they're like, yo, what is that? That looks incredible. You know, how can I be down? How can I eat that? And so we'll start the conversation speaking about food, all the different options that you have. And then they also tend to ask, so what has it done for you? And so that's when we're able to open up the conversation into what it did for me from a health standpoint, what it did for me as far as the weight loss, as far as the activity. But again, more importantly, like I tell people, you know, I'm a much more compassionate individual, but I'm also a much more loving individual too. So especially when I'm speaking to men, you know, especially more of your machismo, athletic, you know, that heavy, you know, kind of guy mentality. You know, I like to make sure that I convey to them that, look, I'm like, I'm just as strong as I've always been. I'm just as manly as I've always been, but I'm a much more compassionate, much more loving individual. And I believe that I'm a better person for it too. So I love sharing that information with, with all of the fellas out there, especially and letting them know, yo, we can be cool. We can do all the things that we used to, but still eat the way that I eat. And like I said, it's a much better life for it. Mm -hmm. I think this is also a perfect segue into our other guest we have today, Bobby Lynch. He's a health coach. He's the host of Plant Strength Radio, and he's also the founder of a vegan certified uh, product that is certified right. by my business. There you go. There's our global trademark, which we'll talk about later in the show. But right. a male and a health coach and an athlete. So, Bobby, thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me on, guys. It's been a yeah. pleasure. So I want to give you the opportunity to jump in and add to um, – to what Marlon was saying, and you know, you're you're a guy, you're a vegan, you're out there coaching people to live a more holistically uh, sound life, and you're successful at it. So, give yeah, us some yeah. Advice. So I guess well, I kind of like I kind of want to start because I connected with your story a lot, Marlon. It was uh, how you ultimately went vegan and uh, what the health was was what did it for me too. Once I saw what the health, I vowed to never eat meat again. But I was still kind of caught up in the bro science of like, all right, because I played football. I was a multi-sport athlete growing up. Uh, I started playing tackle football when I was seven years old. I played all the Dude. way through college. Um, and so, I mean, like just thinking about my diet when I was in college and how much animal protein I ate. <laughs> I mean, it was like every single meal had some sort crazy, of- Crazy, man. Protein. It was crazy. It was like, whether it was, whether it was meat or whether it was egg whites, eggs, dairy, cheese, it was like beef jerky, whey protein shakes. You know, five or six times a day, man. <laughs> uh, five or six times a day, like, uh, you know, 200 to 300 grams of protein, all being animal protein and like, the amount of calories is just insane thinking about my diet in college and so like because of that bro science that we're just pushed it's pushed on us in our society of uh you know especially being men specifically and being athletes of saying hey you need meat you need animal protein to build muscle and then just as a population in whole as a whole to be healthy I was like, okay, well, you know what? I can give up meat because I was, I've always been an animal lover, um, but I never really was connected to what I was eating on my, what was on my plate. I only ever saw the final product and I never saw the process. And even though I knew, okay, this is chicken, this is steak, this is turkey, this is bacon, whatever. It comes from a chicken, a cow, a turkey or a pig, right? I just really never made that connection that this was a beautiful living sentient creature that had thoughts, feelings, had a family, had the desire to live just like all of us and was just like my pets that I had at home. I grew up with uh, dogs and cats. I still have two dogs today. And I just never really made that connection. And then once I continued educating myself and following different influencers on social media, watching more documentaries, the next one I watched was Cowspiracy, also by the same maker of What the Health. Um, uh, you know, I haven't even finished through Dominion yet and Earthlings, but seeing I con I've constantly seen so many of those like bits and pieces of those all over social media, and and then also following other like influencers on the fitness side, like Nimai Delgado or Simnet Nutrition, and just realizing, oh wow, look at these guys—they are building muscle, 
and eating only a vegan diet. So if they can do it, that's kind of always my, my mindset has always been about anything. If you can do it, I can do it too. So mm -hmm. that's once I saw that and just realized, okay, this is what I teach people anyway. It's calories in, calories burned. And then when it comes down to building a lean and muscular physique, depending on your goals and your level of activity, that's where how much protein you need will come into play. But then it's it's just at the end of the day, like the food source doesn't matter in terms of just seeing changes to your outward appearance. Now, where it matters is like what's going on and the story that's being told inside your body for your health and longevity. And that's where a plant-based diet shines. And I am like in better shape than I was in college. I'm like just as, just as muscular, I'm actually stronger. I just tested all of my numbers. <laughs> Um, right at, you know, like right towards the, the beginning of quarantine in May, um, all of my numbers were higher than my final test numbers in college. Um, and I'm like, I'm just lighter. I perform better. I still playing multiple sports. Um, and I play in a flag football league, which just ended going for bike rides, hiking. And then of course I'm like in the gym four to five days a week, lifting weights, doing power lifting, doing, um, calisthenics, doing CrossFit type workouts, just being an athlete overall. And I feel just so much better. And I know that's like, just that's just based on how I feel, but it's like the common trend is the same with everyone who goes plant-based and goes and does it right. That's a big thing where people fail on a vegan diet is they're just not properly educated about how can I achieve the results that I want to achieve. And usually where I see people when they go vegan and they fail is because they just start eating like lettuce <laughs> like and greens and they don't they don't find those nutrient dense calorically dense plant based based foods to substitute in in place of the calorically dense meat and animal products like eggs dairy cheese etc you need to find those replacements and that's why we came out with our product chicken bite okay. meat, 17 grams of protein Per serving, as you guys can see right here, per four ounce serving, no fat, 120 calories, 13 grams of carbs, but only seven grams of fiber. And how I ended up coming out with those, just kind of segueing off of that, was when I went vegan. For me, because like the driving force is the animals. And like that was kind of really it from the beginning, more so than the health, more so than the environment. Like it's it's for all of them, but the main one was the animals because like I said, these are beautiful sentient creatures. And a principle that I always apply to my life when making a decision that involves the life of another, whether human or animal, is is what I'm about to do something that I would want done to me or for me if I were in on the receiving end of my actions. And if the answer is no, then I do not carry forward what I'm about to do, no matter what it is. And so whether that is going out and taking the life of an animal, which I would never do to eat, or paying for somebody else to do it, because when you pass your dollar over to buy that meat, to buy those animal products, somebody else is doing that torturing, they're putting those animals through that life of suffering, and then they're taking those animals' lives at the end of the day. So that's like my main driving force. But, you know, you probably get this, both of you guys probably get this asked all the time, where do you get your protein? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Asked all the time, is where do you get your protein? And so I started, you know, because it was for me, It once I fully connected with what what is my purpose for going vegan why would i go vegan then i was like all right that this is it i'm vegan i'm gonna find a way i'm gonna figure it out so i started doing research and then i really started learning about the benefits of soy something that i used to completely avoid because of the bro science oh you eat, you consume soy you're gonna yes. man boobs you're gonna your testosterone is gonna decrease <laughs> Completely false, completely false. Um, yes, uh, soy has estrogen, but it's phytoestrogen. It has an anti-estrogenic effect on the human body. It mimics mammalian estrogen, but mammalian estrogen comes from mammals. So what we produce as humans, because we're mammals, but also what you're getting from the mammals that you're consuming and when you're consuming their byproducts, those are real dietary sources of mammalian estrogen, which actually raise your own levels of estrogen. Soy has the complete opposite effect. I eat soy every single day. 
Um, and so once I kind of figured that out, I was like, all right, let me kind of experiment with things. So I learned a lot about soy and soy flour and the properties of it. And then eventually it translated into me kind of getting creative in the kitchen and making my chicken bites. And now I was like, wait a second, people keep asking me where to get my protein. And I'm always like, chicken, chicken bites. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, myself. I'm like, okay, let me figure out, let me perfect the recipe. So try and I get, you know, we did some uh, sample consumer research. We gave out a hundred samples of our original recipe from that research. We perfected it and now it's to where it's at today. And uh, we're currently live with our pre-launch campaign um, right there. We're certified through BVET. If you guys go to plant strength foods.com you'll be able to pick pick yourself up a pack and during our pre-launch campaign which is live right now for november 10 percent of all sales go to our partner farm sanctuary so right now uh this week we're partnered with sleepy pig farm from redding connecticut 10 percent of all sales this week will go to them then we are partnered with austin farm sanctuary next week um, after that, we have Spring Farm Sanctuary, and then week four is Unity Farm Sanctuary. So 10% of all sales during our campaign are going to go to them. And, and um, our campaign is to help us fund our full production starting January 2021. Okay. And Bobby, how long have you made a career out of your vegan diet, helping people? Now you have a product launch. How long has this been going on for you? So uh, specifically veganism. Um, so Plant Strength Performance, I founded it February 2019. Um, so I went vegan August, 2018. And then I went, I went vegetarian though, uh, November, 2017. That's when I saw what the hell. And, um, I've always been in the fitness industry. Kind of, like I said, I grew up a multi-sport athlete playing football, baseball, basketball, all the way through, um, high school. And then just solely focused on football during college. I still like snowboard. I've been snowboarding since I was young. And like I said, it's kind of being an athlete overall. And then, um, but I went to school for managerial economics actually. And I minored in Spanish. I thought for the longest time I was going to go the corporate route, get a job on Wall Street, but it just never sat right in my heart. One thing led to the next, and uh, ultimately after I graduated, I ended up starting my own coaching practice, getting certified with NASM, and then eventually certified uh, the National Academy of Sports Medicine as, as a personal trainer, and then eventually I got certified with precision nutrition as a nutrition coach, but I wasn't vegan at the time. And it's funny because when I started my own coaching practice originally, I was... I always had this feeling just deep in my gut that I kind of wanted to rebrand even like even not long after I founded it, the practice and it was called premium one training and nutrition premium one training.com. It's, you know, it's no longer operating now because I'm now fully plant strength performance, but I always felt like I was like, I want to rebrand, but I don't know what I want to do rebrand to. And I swear when I went vegan, it was just like plant strength came to my head. I fully felt connected with my spirituality and my purpose in life. And then like I started um, creating my uh, the uh, lifestyle transformation program that we have, the Plan Strength Blueprint. Um, and then eventually one, once I got that ready and I took, I took, you know, a couple of clients through it as like a test run. And then I eventually founded um, Plan Strength Performance in February 2019. Originally just founded the company doing online coaching through our web platform and app. But now we've grown to um, so much more. We have our products. Also, quarantine has helped us too. Guys, we launched our resistance band sets uh, during quarantine to help people out. Um, I published my book, The Winner's Manual, January 1st this year. And, um, and you know, eventually we're going to move into more products. Our team has grown to 11 total, including myself, two other co-founders. And then we have um, some other coaches and ambassadors on the team. So we're just slowly growing. And it's just like I, I literally wake up every day so motivated and so passionate and so happy to be doing what I'm doing. And I just really couldn't imagine my life any other way. I think mm -hmm. that it's really like interesting to bring up right now is every week I have two different people booking my shows, right? I have, I have Paige booking the guests to talk about the vegan message and the laws that matter. And then I have my office booking the BevVeg certified vegan product of the week that we wish to highlight. But every week, the synchronicity of this universe, which we live in this law-based universe, always puts the perfect guests together on the perfect show. It's incredible. <laughs> like the fact that Bobby, that you you know you were here today just for your product. Your your launch is you know now, and you have all these specials. But you're also a health coach, and you are in the exact same profession as 
everyone else who's on this show today. It's a perfect round table. Last right. week, I had um, these uh, Jewish rabbis and Jewish leaders on, and I had um, the Bevet certified uh, brand of the week was um, uh, plant the plant foods, uh, fast food chain in Whole Foods, who's He's also Jewish and he totally understood the Jewish diet and kosher diet and that's why he became vegan. And then the week before I had someone who, I had Happy Hummus on who was donating to kids in schools. And then I also had on that same show, the whole show was about um, someone whose entire vegan platform is for hero kids. And, and then the week before that, I had Unity Vibration Kombucha, and it was during the Unity Conference, the Up Convergence yeah. Conference. And it's always a coincidence every week. It just shows that you're in your power when you merge your profession with your passion and you make it your life's work because every single one of us here, including myself with Beef Edge, has somehow aligned with what feels right to us. And, you know, Bobby, I think when you say, oh, you, you know, the corporate thing didn't sit right with you. In a way, you're still doing the corporate thing. You're just being entrepreneurial. Right. About it. I'm just doing it. I'm just doing it my way. Your and way. That's, that's the thing. Like I always kind of knew. I, I even since since I was young, I always I just realized that time was my most valuable currency mm -hmm. because it's the only thing that goes. Money will come and go, and that's like inevitable. And it kind of just like when my dad passed away five years ago, and this is like one of the like one of the reasons I also went vegan because he died of a, a gastrointestinal disease. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a very rare form, and and just to see that. And then once I started doing the research and realizing that what causes uh, it was highly correlated with causing diseases of the gastrointestinal, with high consumptions of red and processed meat. And I've yet seen my dad on the outside, he looked like me in physical shape, just, you know, older. I mean, I, I would always say he was like the epitome of a healthy adult middle-aged man. But he was 55 when he passed. And like on the inside, his body was just a wreck because of the disease. And we ate meat like every single day. Went through a gallon of milk a, a, a day. We went through mm. pounds of meat. My dad's favorite meal out at a restaurant was a 12 ounce, 12 ounce sirloin called medium rare. So basically come out on the plate bloody. And we would have red meat probably on average family two to three times a week. And my, my parents quit smoking before I was born. I'm 26. When my dad passed, I was 21 at the time. So like that wasn't a, you know, that, that wasn't an effect for him. And it's just like how much meat that he was, we were consuming every day. It's like, yes, it's going to, it's going to vary from person to per, per, person to person. But what you put in and on your body really determines the story that's being told and how it's going to directly affect your health. And so kind of like having that realization of, wow, like look at how, look at all the stuff that my dad did in his life and now he's gone. And just that's why I was like, you know what? I'm, I like, it's almost my duty to pursue exactly what it is that I want to pursue if this is really the only life that I have to live. Because once I'm gone, I'm gone. I don't get it back. So I'm not going to waste it doing anything that really doesn't matter to me in the end. I want to make a difference in this world. So I'm going to do it my way. And that's, mm -hmm. that's kind of like why I started working for myself right from the time I graduated school. And, and I encourage other people to either do the same if they're an entrepreneur or just figure out what it is that they're passionate about. Because if working a corporate job is what they're passionate about, then do it. Mm -hmm. oh, if that's going to bring you happiness, do that. But if it's not bringing you happiness, don't do it because you're chasing the dollar. That's it's like you're going to be so unhappy and you're going to waste your life. And you're going to wish, look, you're going to look back in your life. And I, I saw that pain in my dad's, you know, in my dad's eyes. Not like because he didn't do what he loved, because he did, but just like regret of, you know, Bob. I wish we had. You know, I wish I'd kind of taken you guys on more family vacations and not worked, not worked as much. My dad worked mm -hmm. all the time. You know, and just seeing that regret and you can't get it, you just realize you can't get it back. Pursue what it is that makes you, that like lights your soul on fire and live a good life. Yeah, yeah. I, that's another thing here. Everybody here is an entrepreneur, right? A passion. Absolutely. And I, so I think not only can you give health advice and diet advice and exercise advice, but I think there's another seg segment of advice we can give here to people who don't know how to get started, who might have a passion, but who might be stuck in another career. 
And like Bobby, what you're saying, the time is now, right? To start whatever you want to do in life. And I always try to tell people there's never a perfect time to get started and you don't have to do it perfectly. You just have to get it going. And once you start setting things in motion, the next door opens and the next door opens. And then, you know, it's that whole law of attraction, action plus alignment equals attraction, you know, align with what you want, take, take an action towards it. If you take a baby step towards it, you might get a baby step of a door opening back at you. Or if you take a, a giant leap of faith, you might have quantum progress. Um, so it's all about just getting started. So let's talk about that for a second. Um, Marlon, how did you get started? Um, you know, it's kind of funny. I was thinking about that as you as you spoke about it. And I know whenever I first started on my vegan journey and got a little bit more comfortable in it, I wanted to make a positive impact in people's lives um, as much as I could. I'd already gone through the weight loss transformation. So I was interested in, um, you know, utilizing the opportunity to speak to uh, different groups from a motivation standpoint, et cetera. But what I wanted to do first and foremost was really um, kind of ingrain myself in the culture. And so that's when I started traveling out to uh, the West Coast because I knew, you know, veganism was heavy out in California. And so that's when I went out there. And I felt like that's when I really got indoctrinated in what this thing not only is about, but what you can do with it from a business standpoint. And I'll tell you, one of the first people that I met, in fact, I think it was the first weekend I went out was John Sally. And so he and I were talking. And so we had chopped it up for a while. And he told me, he was like, hey, man, you know, I know you work in, you know, business, um, kind of a corporate environment. But he said, you can make money doing this by doing exactly what it is that you're doing. He said, I know you're passionate about it. I know you love helping people. He said, but, you know, you can actually turn this into a business opportunity and still do something you're passionate about. He said, you know, don't sleep on that opportunity. And so I took that along with the drive that I had. And so that's when I started doing more as far as um, speaking engagements, whenever we were doing more traveling. So, you know, ended up getting booked to do more speaking engagements, um, started doing some cooking demos, did a few of those with Chef Bobette. And uh, so for me, back to your original point, it just took jumping out there. You know, that's exactly what I did. I said, you know what? Great. I'm jumping out there. I'm going to meet as many people as I possibly can. We're going to make this thing happen. And that's mm -hmm. exactly what took place. Yeah. John, Sally, Chef Bobette, all people that have been on the laws that matter, great people to know. Good people. Great inspirations, too. Um, but I think one thing that we also need to address is people have a fear about being bold and jumping out. They have a fear. So Stephanie, why don't you discuss how to overcome that fear and to be brave enough to say, you know what, I'm not going to chase this dollar. I'm going to take a risk on myself because perhaps the greatest bet in life is on me. You know, you can control me. You can't control other people, but you can control you. So if you are set on something working out, the only person that's really going to let you fail is you by giving up. But how do you really get over that fear? Because we all f feel fear. It's a human yeah. condition. Yeah, we do. And, you know, and I, and I think back to what you were saying, you know, we, we forget, I, I think that we forget or sometimes we're not taught that we can change our reality. We are full creators of where our life goes. And, and it, it does take faith. And it does take quieting that fear because I get it. It's scary. Making a change is super scary. Doing something for the first time is scary. And I mean, and I still, you know, I still get that like that anxious feeling or, or I like to actually say that excited feeling because anxious and excited are very similar feelings. And so I think it's, it's really trying to turn things around, changing your mindset instead of coming from fear and being fearful of something or fearful to jump into something coming from a place of love and, and you know and, and I know sometimes people will will knock that down but it has worked for me every time really trying to sit with myself and if I was coming from a loving place where would this idea go how how much quicker would I get there because fear limits us and 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 again I'm saying it happens to everyone and, and I mean I even still ha let fear creep into my life yeah fear is constricting and faith is expansive but we yeah. all we all have a sense of fear and sometimes that fear can be debilitating like I like to say if a thought doesn't serve you and you have anxiety file a motion to dismiss on the universe dismiss it it's not helping you you know move on it's like my my legal you know procedure here within universal laws but um I think 
every single one of us experiences fear, but we also have that contrast of what we want, which can drive us to achieve yes. us to get it. So the question is, is what's the overriding emotion that's going to either allow you to achieve the success? Yeah. You know, one, I was going to say one thing right quick, Carissa, and I know Bobby probably knows from a weightlifting and, and a working out standpoint, but, you know, and I used to, you know, personal train people too. And, and you know, whenever you'd have that amount of weight that's on the bar, you've like, I've never done that before. And, and all of that is is going through your head. And what I would ask my clients was, you know, I'd ask them this question. I said, who said fear meant stop? Mm -hmm. I said, who 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 made that a law that fear means stop? I was like, there's a lot of times I'm nervous or I'm fearful, but I keep putting one foot in front of the other because I know what's in front of me. I know yeah. what I'm working towards. So so you can be fearful but don't stop. It's okay. It's okay to live with that at times. That's the thing that I try to convey to people is it's all right to feel a tad bit uncomfortable, but don't stop doing it. Mm -hmm. Don't get, stop doing it. Yeah, get yes. determined, I think, is what you need to do at that time. I remember, so I was a professional ballet dancer, so I understand the athleticism as well. And I remember when I was 14 years old, you just gave me a memory. I was at sleepaway camp and there was um, one of the girls in my ballet class, super talented. She was a principal ballet dancer, Miami City Ballet. She recently retired, but at 14, she was something else. And I remember we were doing a pirouette contest. And we did, okay, we did one together, one turn. And then we go, okay, let's do a double. And then we did two turns. And then we both did that. And then she goes, let's do a triple. And then we did three turns and we both did that. And then we did four turns. And then it got to five. And we both looked at each other. We both were like, we've never done that. Anyway, after much determination and hard work in the studio, she was doing 11 pirouettes on point and I was doing eight. So <laughs> like we were able to just say, you know, and as soon as one of us did it, the next one was going to do it. Yes, you know? yes. like, I, I was like, she just did it. I'm going to do it too now. But um, that determination can really drive you. And that's what makes someone successful. And trust me, I think a pirouette's a perfect example because do you know how many times we've both also fell down? <laughs> we yeah. both fell down and we had to get up and we had to do it again and again and again until we learned how to do it right. And I think people look at, other people who have achieved success and they think, oh, it was an overnight sensation. It's never an overnight sensation. And I'm sure each one of us here can talk about how many times we've, we've, we think we failed, but you don't really fail until you just give in because mm -hmm. it's never easy. I always I think tell people it's it, success and failure are on the same road. You're both walking down it success is just the one that got up after failing and kept moving forward. And that doesn't mean that that success didn't fall a couple more times, dust those knees off and keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thomas Edison, when he said making the light bulb, he says, I didn't fail. I just learned 999 ways not to do it. Exactly. I think, I think personally what drives me is fear, but it's the fear of regret. It's the mm. fear of what if it's the fear of, living my whole life and not giving it a chance. I think for me, the hardest thing is not trying than trying and like, cause again, it's not failing. It's every failure is an opportunity to learn, to grow. Hey, I didn't, it didn't work out this time. So I know to do it differently next time. And so I think like my best advice for that to try to get over that leap is think of the alternative. What's the alternative? Like, are you still alive? Are you here? Are you healthy? Right. Okay. So what's the alternative to, not going after it is what that's going to bring you an abundance of happiness in the long run. That's doing the same thing, staying stuck with the status quo, and then looking back on your life when you're older being like, man, that was a waste. Why didn't I go for it? What if? That's that's personally what, what drives me. And, and if you're trying to get started on a side hustle, make it a side hustle. You don't have to just give up your job, your full source of income, especially if you have kids, a family, and you have other expenses that you have to pay. We all have those expenses. I don't have kids or like a family to take care of, but of course, if you need to keep your main job, keep that, do your side hustle, work that until your side hustle is now making more than your main job, and then you can leave your main job. So you don't have to like let anything go and you can maintain, but you just, you have to put in the work. It's gonna take a lot of time, a lot of time. I also think sometimes when you are um, living your life it, uh, pushing up against something and you're not feeling joyful doing it and you're working really hard to try to keep it together that maybe you're supposed to allow it to fall apart 
I know that there's been times in my life where I was holding on to um, certain sources of income that I felt like I had to hold on to because I was making all this money and I need to continue making money this way because, because this is the only way I know how to make money. And it just, you know, was difficult. It was like everything just didn't seem to want to work out. And it was because it just wasn't supposed to work out. Because the moment I stopped chasing that and I allowed the edge to come to be and happen is the moment, you know, I was attracting this abundance of opportunities in another in another place that I just had to, to let go. I think sometimes the universe shows us opportunities and when we ignore it, it's things are difficult. But when we pay attention, it flows and you're in universal flow um, and have synchronicity. So it's so important. Um, where can everyone find all of you guys after this nice synchronistic episode? <laughs> uh, I'll go first right quick. Um, again, uh, you can find me at plantbasedg.life. That's plantbasedg.life, both on Instagram, Facebook, as I mentioned earlier. Tons of good food. I try to drop some mental nuggets too that are good for the soul also. So make sure uh, you check it out. Like I said, I got, got a lot of good items to eat on there. Where's your book? Can you show us? Do you have yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, actually, it's a digital copy as far as the book goes. So, um, but anyways, you can uh, download it uh, at quarantine15. That's quarantine, the number 15.com. And then also, right quick, I've got a mushroom cookbook that's coming out a little bit later this year. So in the final stages of that, 25 recipes, all mushrooms, a lot of stuff in it that you wouldn't believe are mushrooms too. So that'll be dropping a little bit later this year. Okay, and Stephanie? Here, by the way, I've, I I have his cookbook and it's awesome. The things <laughs> he cooks up are amazing. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, yeah, so you can find me as the superfood goddess on Instagram thesuperfoodgoddess.com on my blog site. You can find healthy recipes there. You can contact me. That's how you can get a hold of me to if you want one-on-one -on -one or if you're looking to hear more about my group coaching. Um, and like I said, I just, I love to connect. I love to connect with other people and give knowledge whenever I can. Mm -hmm. And Bobby, what about you? Where can people find you and what do you, off what do you have to offer? So you guys can find me right there if you see on the screen at Bobby Physique. That's on all social media platforms, the main one being Instagram. And then for if you'd like to get yourself some chicken bites, head to plantstrengthfoods.com. Um, that'll link right to the food webpage on our website, which is plantstrengthperformance.com. And so we have a lot to offer at Plant Strength Performance. If you are looking for coaching, we have one-on-one -on -one and two-on-one -on -one or group coaching options. Options. We also have program design options. I'm a coach, but there's also uh, three other coaches on the team as well. And then uh, we have our chicken bites. We have our resistance bands. We have, uh, you know, the copy of my book, The Winner's Manual, which is uh, right up there on the shelf. Um, and then and then we have a lot more stuff coming in the future. And, and we're just constantly out there doing a lot of activism. As you guys can see that sign right there. You don't need meat to build muscle. Prove us wrong. And then there's another one to the to the side of it, it says real men eat plants. We've been out down in New York City with the team uh, just promoting uh, a healthy vegan lifestyle and showing that we're the cool vegans. You know, there's that common stereotype that vegans are not cool. They're they're very pushy or they're or they're, you know, they're very hippie. I mean, I honestly I'm kind of hippie to be honest, but, <laughs> but like you can actually be an athlete, you can have fun with it and you can just live life like everyone else does, but do it in a cruelty free way. So that's what we're out doing. We've been doing that out and uh, down in New York City doing our activism. So that's what you can expect with us at Plant Strength. Well, I think that you're all winners and I think you're all coaches and you're all leaders here in the movement. And it also, you know, as the, the founder and CEO of BeVeg, the we certified vegan Bobby's uh, product here, this there's our there's our logo. I think you guys also brought up something important earlier. Um, Marlon in the show, you said that you felt lied to. Yes. That's what, that's what changed it for you. And um, for vegan certification, a lot of it is it's true. People, the consumer, whether they're vegan or not, does not want to be lied to. And we are going through another level of global accreditation. We're going to announce it formally in about a week. We're about to get um, 17067, which means for conformity assessment program for vegan, for like a global vegan definition. It's almost like setting a legal standard. And um, this is, this is, this is significant for me because the, um, the accreditation center that accredited us in Turkey, uh, the owner's daughter reached out to me and she said, you know, I always thought that vegans 
we're unhealthy or sickly. It's just not anything in our culture that we do. But since we've started doing your accreditation, and now that we've accredited BVEG as a vegan standard, according to like ISO 17065, and now 17067, I started watching your documentaries, like What the Health, Earthlings, Dominion. And she's like, and I've watched your shows and everyone on your show is so healthy and pretty. And I just don't understand that vegan is like the cool thing to be. And I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So now the accreditation center is like all excited about this vegan standard. The daughter is going to be running it. She's, you know, of our you know age generation. And she's really all about making it cool now. And she was not vegan before we applied for our accreditation. And I'm not going to say she's vegan yet, but she is completely shifting her, her focus and understanding that this is a way to achieve um, optimum health. But anyway, we will be back here next week on the Laws That Matter. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And we'll